Hi, I'm Peter Burris, Chief Research Officer of SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, and welcome to theCUBE. We've got a really interesting session today. Uh, one of the first times ever that a company's come on and actually done a significant launch on theCUBE. So here in our Palo Alto studio, uh, I'm sitting with Omer Tryman. Who's Great to be here who's the CEO of Rakana, and Omar, we're going to be talking about Rakana 2.0 today. Absolutely. Now we're going to do this in three segments, and we're going to, first segment we're going to look at what the overall characteristics of the problem uh, within IT operations, and increasingly the digital business operations are. Second, we're going to spend a little bit more time talking specifically about how uh, Rokana and that class of tooling is creating business value, both now and setting up for what the future is likely to look like. And then finally, we're going to bring Eric Sammers on, and Eric is the CTO at Rokana, and he's going to get into some of the technical details of how Rokana 2.0 works. Sound good to you? Absolutely, and I love the idea of doing a uh, digital product announcement, digital launch for a digital world. There you go, and that's what theCUBE's all about. So let's spend a few moments, uh, Omer, talking about the nature of the business problem. You talk about the digital world, everybody talks about digital business, but let's parse that out a little bit. What is digital business and why is it generating new classes of problems? Absolutely, and uh, I think about it in very uh, simplistic terms, right? The world used to look like I as a consumer, I as a customer, my first go-to would be to pick up the phone, send a fax, send an email, have a conversation with a human being. Um, I as a business employed those humans and they relied on internal systems. IT's job, fix the printers, fix the faxes, right? Very simple world. I had my mainframe and a few other systems. The digital business really introduced by the onset of the web, the onset of mobile, is now I as a customer, I as a partner, or even a channel partner, communicate digitally, right? Everything's a web app, everything's a mobile app. As IT, instead of supporting a few thousand, maybe 100,000 people internally, now I'm supporting the entire customer base. Uh, when I, as an IT operations person, see a failure, that is direct revenue impact, second by second. That's a very different world that we're living in today. And the pace at which uh, businesses are adopting that technology is accelerating. So I'll kind of turn that around a little bit uh, and say, and, and, but essentially agree with you and say this, that uh, from our perspective, the world is moving from known process, unknown technology, to unknown process and known technology, where we used to serve employees with systems, and now we're increasingly serving markets. And one of the things that's happening, and this kind of gets us to the next point, is that we're seeing data become an increasingly important feature of how decisions get made, businesses take action, et cetera. And the volumes of data are coming in faster than human beings can accommodate it. Sure. And so it seems as though digital business, which increasingly is about using data as an asset, is now accelerating because data is driving the characteristics of change within the business. And we need to find new ways of accommodating and handling that data throughout the entire business organization. Does that right. make sense to yeah. you? Yeah, no, I think it's very well phrased, very well put. Um, and what I would observe is that we've had this trend building over time. We're finally at a point where business, uh, sort of business leaders are comfortable saying, yes, I know the technology, I want to move faster. IT, giddy up. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it, I like it. <laughs> IT, giddy up, that's what we're looking for here. So let's come back to this notion. So we've, we've got the big problem statement, which is that increasingly digital business is about utilizing data to, uh, to create and sustain customers. So it's an external facing thing. We're not building for employees the same way. Certainly those systems are going to be impacted. We're really building for customers and that is accelerating change dr dramatically. And as you said, IT giddy up. So what are the key impacts on an IT organization today? What we're seeing uh, in terms of impact on IT is this uh, sort of parallel to what happened with businesses and call it the sort of the 80s, early 90s where they used to work in very sort of regimented siloed models, right? So IT is used to, I buy a system, I buy some operation software, I hire some folks, I build a runbook, I run that system in its own silo. And as long as it's running, I'm good, right? I think the first thing to disrupt this was probably networking, 
right? Uh, all of a sudden networking cross, cut across everything. But largely IT is still run in these sort of silos. You can put security in there, you can put application performance management in there, um, you can put uh, uh, sort of data operations, DBA, sort of database management, right? A bunch of these different systems. Everyone is kind of doing their own thing. Right, And when business comes along and says, I need something new, all of a sudden you have 40 different organizations looking at 40 different tools with 40 different ways of operating that have to collaborate at an increasing cadence. Right, Development says, I don't want to ship once every three years. I don't even want to ship once a year. I want to ship multiple times a month. I want to get to the point that I ship new capabilities for the business multiple times a day. Now, take the 40 different parts of IT. You guys need to change how you do things 40 times a day, right? Uh, all, all sort of uh, coordinated. So the, that, that sort of cadence uh, is breaking the silo-based model that IT is used to working in. And in many respects, that silo-based model was predicated on these known process applications. I run the accounting system, which became the finance system, which became the ERP system. I run the CRM system. Those are relatively known and well understood types of processes. Right. Now, what we're gaining is as we try to cut, cut across these application sets, we're also cutting across the functions, but we're trying to use data differently. Right. And it starts with gaining greater visibility into what's happening within all these different systems. So talk a little bit about how IT organizations today are taking steps to gain, to at least start gaining visibility sure. into how their systems are working so they can start from their perspective, see how business events are correlated together. So let's start at helping folks understand the um, scale of the challenge and then why this is Great. only now becoming possible. So uh, think of a basic transaction. Uh, I go and buy something, there's a handful of uh, records in a bunch of different systems saying, I bought something, ship it to Omer, right? Um, then there's sort of, what's the trail of my interactions? Uh, the click stream, if you will, how do I market better? How do I optimize? How do I make sure it's routed to the right place if it's misrouted? And that's maybe an order to magnitude more. So you went from you know tens to maybe hundreds of events um, that uniquely describe some basic business transaction the business is interested in. When you get to the system level, how many packets, how many IOPS, how many memory requests, how many interchanges between the flow from the mobile app to you know, today, still the mainframe, where this transaction actually, hap actually happened, you're talking another few order of magnitude, thousands or tens of thousands of events for one business transaction. And if one of those events indicates a problem, the transaction doesn't happen. Okay. Well, let's give let's put a really concrete example. So many years ago, I did a, a, a series of research papers uh, that led to what I called the rule of seven. And the notion was that with every successive generation of automation, the number of transactions with the same exact work goes up seven x. Sure. So if we take a look, for example, banking. Yep. You know, when I was a young man, paycheck, you go to the go to the branch, yeah. go to the teller, put your money in, get your cash out. Then you go to ATMs. Now I'm going three or four times a week, or you know, a couple times, seven times uh, in that two week period. Sure. When you start doing it online, you get the same type of thing. So even though we're effectively still doing the same thing, as we add automation, then we are increasing the number of transactions and therefore increasing the amount of data that's yeah. associated with that work. And we haven't even talked about the new work that's possible. So we have a deluge of data that we have to manage just to keep the steady state business going because we're adding a little bit more automation here and there, but we're also starting to use that data to do new things. So talk a little bit about how those two different activities within an IT organization, catalyzed by data, are starting to affect IT operations. Right, so right, right now IT ops is kind of running at their limit just keeping the lights on with this increase in transaction volume. At the same time, they know that they need new technologies. These are the platform services. Uh, think of Cloud Foundry, OpenStack, think of public clouds, uh, think of containers, right? Those allow IT to be more flexible, more responsive to the business, they're more robust. Um, and introducing those to a world that's already in chaos, I mean, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Um, and then when you look at the day-to-day -day work, they're getting a flood of uh, sort of alerts and notifications, red light here, this is failing there. And yet when they want to go back as an operations uh, or sysadmin, right? I want to go back and look at what actually happened. Just show me the threat. 
Give me the highlight reel, right, of where things uh, transpired in order to solve this critical mass of alerts that I've gotten. Uh, they're looking at five to 10% of all of this massive event stream. And this is not numbers that we're making up, right? This is customers came to us and said, I've got 40 different tools and I see 5% of what's actually happening when I look at all of that tooling. And by the way, I can only keep it for a few weeks. So if I want to know what happened last year in detail to compare to the errors I saw this year on, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it's not even possible, right? I can't even, I can't even ask the question. So digital business is demanding a change. IT organizations are struggling to deliver that change given past practices. This notion of data as an asset is at the center of all of this. What is Recona 2.0 and how is Recona 2.0 bringing capabilities to the IT organization to start solving these problems and delivering that business value? So we're answering a need that has been echoed very clearly from the market. Uh, IT ops looks around and says, we're flooded with data. Um, what do other people do when they're flooded with data? What did the business do in the 80s when all of a sudden everything got digitized and instead of paper they had uh, masses of spreadsheets. They went out through, through three martini lunches is what they did. That is exactly what they did. Um, and then they bought a warehouse. Exactly. Right? They said, we need to centralize where all this data flows so we can do proper analytics, proper forecasting, we can do trending, we can look historically. And so IT is screaming for a warehouse. Call it an event data warehouse, call it a lake, call it an ocean, right? There's lots of terminology for it. They want to get rid of all these little tools as the uh, authoritarian, uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, sorry. They want to get rid of all these tools as sort of the, um, the, the truth, the centralized truth of where things are. They want one centralized but, truth. But each of, of these, each of these are centralized, these are, these are truths for an individual device or Correct. truths for an individual asset. They're not truths for the system. Exactly. Exactly. And you want to get to the truth for. for the system, but even then, beyond that, the truth for the digital business. Yes. Where is the digital business right now by correlating all these events and then getting to the point where an organization can say, we now have a sense of where we are, where we're going, near term, and we have the ability to rationalize how we're going to handle the resources to do That's it. That's exactly what the market is asking for. And so our uh, approach to this is to think of it almost like a central nervous system. Right, actually get all the sort of the inputs, all the events, not just the logs, not just the metrics, not just the stuff that's running over the network and the hardware, the full stack of every single thing that's happening, uh, flow it through one location, not just to warehouse it, but actually to be able to do uh, rich analytics, to have uh, the machines do a lot of the heavy lifting through machine learning and anomaly detection. And now with Rokana 2.0 to actually plug that into uh, real-time responses so that the business as a whole, not in individual silos, but holistically react to changes in the system, to changes in the business. Well, the interesting thing about a warehouse is not that you can put stuff in there, but the type of work you can do within it. Exactly. So the first time that I visited a, the, the, uh, a distribution center for a very, very large logistics company, I was absolutely amazed at the amount of work and the characteristics of the work that was being conducted. It was ex from, the, from the outside, it's extremely complex, yet there's still a almost a beauty to it in how it gets orchestrated. So Rakana is doing more than just creating a place for the data, it's actually conducting or putting forward the services and the capabilities to provide that orchestration. That's right. Uh, when we first introduced the product to market, so Rakana 1.0 was a solution for operational visibility, right? How does IT ops actually see everything, not bits and pockets of, of, of silos? And so our customers now are succeeding with that. They know what happened yesterday, they can compare it to a year ago, and they can see the entire stack, um, and that's a handful of clicks. Right versus, I don't know where that data is, it's the network team's fault, it's the data team's fault, it's the application team's fault. Did code get deployed? I don't know. It's in Rokana now. Uh, Rokana 2.0 takes that and puts it on the wire. Uh, we start uh, introducing the ability to react. We call this um, the Rokana uh, reflex system, right? Um, where you can basically take all the information that's flowing through and instantly take action on it or alert someone, or just record that it happened because that's going to be a very important event to look at later. Um, so take, for example, uh, sort of a media organization, right? So you have a content distribution network where you're digitally, digitally publishing media, um, and you have a special event. Right. Now, what happens at that special event is all the rules go out the window, right? You need quality of service for that one stream, but you don't want it to affect all the other streams. 
So what do you do? You hire a few hundred people to sit staring at consoles, kind of clicking refresh, making sure that nothing looks, I don't know, abnormal based on having done this the last time around. With Rokana Reflex, all that data is flowing through Rokana anyways, right? It's the central nervous system for the organization. And so uh, Reflex allows you to plumb in ruling that uh, rules that look holistically. And they can say, okay, for all of these streams in aggregate, if they're having a negative impact on uh, you know, someone who's looking at uh, an old video through the CDN, um, uh, let's scale up certain parts of the system if it deviates from previous expected behavior, even though I don't know what expected behavior might be, I can't type it in, right? But use the anomaly detection system to trigger that as it's happening in milliseconds, right? You can plumb this intelligent automation now for the first time ever. So it's not big data for IT operations, but it is the utilizing many of those techniques to deliver new types of automation to how IT operations works, which then, is crucial to how digital business works. So in this first segment, we've talked a little bit about the problems of di that digital business has wrought, uh, the horrible experience <laughs> that it's creating for IT, and how, very importantly, Rakana 2.0 can solve those things. So we're going to take a break, and in the next uh, section, we're going to come back and talk about, or get a little bit more into this notion of business value. How does this all lead to business value? So stay with us. This is theCUBE from our Palo Alto studios.